Thank you for joining this training video on Salesforce Maps. Maps is now available directly on Pulse for you. To add Maps as a tab on your navigation bar, click the pencil icon on the top right of your screen to personalize your navigation bar. When the pop-up window appears, please select Add More Items, followed by All under the available items on the left-hand side. In the search bar provided, type in Maps. And next to the first option named Maps, click the plus icon until the green tick appears and then click Add One More Nav Item. This will add the Maps tab to the bottom of the list. You can drag and drop to reposition the tab wherever you like on your navigation bar. For now, I'm going to place Maps at the end and click Save. You will now see that Maps is available as a tab on the navigation bar. Please note this may be within the More dropdown depending on the number of tabs you have on Pulse. To open Maps, we're now going to click on the Maps tab. And it might just take a couple of seconds while this loads up the Maps layers for you. When you open up Maps, the, a default layer will appear for you, which is the hypo combined ICU potential versus revenue for the last 12 months. This is a great visualization showing the combined ICU potential versus revenue over the last 12 months for all your accounts, and they are plotted based on the information added on the account page using the location on the billing address. This is an interactive map where you can zoom in and out using your mouse to get to a specific area or territory. If when you open the map, you were look, your screen view is in a position that is not where you are located, you can drag over to find your area that you wish to be your default location on opening the maps. And on the top right of your hands of your screen on the blue navigation bar, there will be a default map view where you can select this house icon and from the drop down set as default view. This will ensure that each time you open maps, you don't need to repeat this step. On the left hand side, you will see the layer that is automatically loaded for you. Um, this is bucketing the potential into various uh, different groups. So we have zero potential, one to 100,000, 100,000 to 150,000, 150 to 200,000, 200,000 to 500,000, 500,000 to just under 1 million, and everything 1 million and higher. Within each bucket, there are further groupings which show the percentage of revenue achieved. So you will see accounts with zero or less, uh, 1 to 24%, 25 to 49%, 50 to 74%, 75 to 99% and 100% and higher. The potential is shown based on the buckets and it is denoted by a shape. So for example, accounts with zero potential are a square, accounts with a potential of 100,000 to 100, just under 150,000 is a triangle and accounts with 1 million or higher are a star shape. The color of the shape itself is what shows you what percentage of that potential has been achieved over the last 12 months. So anything that is zero or less will be a very light blue color. Anything that is one to 24% will be a lighter, light shade of blue. We have a darker blue, which shows 25 to 49%. 50 to 74 is orange, 75 to 99 is green, and 100% and higher will be yellow. If you want to narrow the amount of accounts you see on the page, you can do this by selecting accounts that have a specific potential. So for example, you could select one to just under 100,000 to show only accounts with that potential. Within those accounts, you can also focus even further so that you can see um, which accounts, for example, have achieved um, 50 to 74% revenue over the last 12 months. You can also select multiple options. So you could also look at the accounts with 75 to 99 and 100% and higher so that you can see all accounts that are achieving greater than 
of their potential. You can quickly reselect everything using this button on the top left or deselect again to select uh, exactly what you want to see. For example, if you wanted to see all the accounts that are retrieving over 75% in all the different buckets that you have, all you need to do is select the 75 to 99 and 100 and higher in each of the buckets. And this will plot on the map for you all the accounts that have 75% um, or more of the revenue um, achieved of the potential. I'm going to um, select everything again. So I want to use this option here to select all. And if you are analyzing the map and you feel that maybe a lot of your accounts are missing or they're not displayed, it is important to remember that the account information is um, up to date for the billing address. Um, you will have an option to uh, see the bad addresses. So the bad addresses you see within the layer um, tell you which ones haven't been populated. So you can click the blue link, which will show you the full list and you can even export as Excel or a CSV. You can click on the hospital name here and it'll bring you directly to the account page where you can update the billing information. I'm now going to look at an account um, in detail. Um, so for example, we can scroll in here to my demo account in um, Athenry Galway. So here, when you click on the account, so when you click on the potential shape, um, there's different tabs within the window for you. So we have the information tab, which shows you whether the account is a top high potential account. You'll see the combined potential for the year. So this account is 41,521. If you don't have a potential here, please check that an ICU bed number is entered on the account page as this is the base for the calculations. If there is revenue against the account, you will see the last 12 month revenue here. This is updated on a monthly basis. And then the percentage last 12 months revenue versus combined potential is an automatic calculation. So this will display here. In the case of my demo account, um, we do not have any revenue against this account. If we click on the actions tab, you'll see various different options available to you. So you can create a new event, you can create a new task. To do this, all you have to do is simply click the button. It'll open up a new window for you. So here you will see the familiar fields you ha are, have for activity creation. Please always remember to ensure that the account is related to the event that you are creating. This is to ensure that all the activity is captured against the account. To navigate back to maps, all you need to do is click the window within your browser to bring you back to the page you were just on. The same applies for new tasks. So when you click the new task button, this will open up a new window. And again, you will need to enter in the information provided. The, or, these are all fields you're familiar with. And again, please ensure that you relate it to an account if it's a specific task that you need to remember. So if it's an account you need to make a phone call against, please ensure you relate it so that you can easily find it within Pulse. I'm going to navigate back to Salesforce Maps by clicking the window tab. And I'm now going to show you Take Me There. So Take Me There is an option for you where you can click this button and it'll open up Google Maps for you and you can um, set your starting point and get directions to that location. There is also um, the option to add to route. So add to route is to create a new route. You can create a second route by saying add to new route. So you will, in order to do this, you need to initially have saved the first route. But what this does is it will add it to the uh, left hand side in within the routes tab. So for example, if I was to be traveling to this account from Aerogen, um, in Galway, you can search in the top right hand side for Aerogen. So I'm going to go Galway Business Park and you can see that this is Aerogen placed on the map. So I'm going to add this to uh, my route. And then I'm also going to um, add my account in Athenry to the route. So as you've just seen, you can easily add to route by clicking on the icon and select add to route. So this is when you use the search option to find maybe 
your home location or an office base and then you also have the option to do this within the actions tab of an account itself so you can add to root. If for example you want to add both to a root at once you can use the draw a rectangle, draw a circle or draw a polygon option where you can click the shape Sorry, I'm going to have to add Aerogen back in. So we have Aerogen here, so I'm going to zoom out. Click the rectangle, draw over the area you want to add to the root, right click, and under Mass Actions, you can add to root. So this will add it to your root on the left hand side. I'm actually going to add Aerogen in a second time because I know that this is also going to be my ending point. So you can lock the stop order, which will get you directions based on the layout that you see on the, the roots pane, or you can set different locations. So you can click here and go lock to start. You can click on the three dots and click lock to end. And you can even add in another um, option if you want. And then you can click optimize. And this will give you the best suggestion in terms of routing so that you can save time, get there faster. So you can see this would be the route that it would recommend that you take for this trip. You have the option to save routes. You can just close and remove it from the map. So I'm going to discard and I'm going to remove that. To remove the shape that I've drawn on, You all you need to do is right click and click on remove layer. And I'm going to close my pane on the right hand side. So they are the actions. So you can also set the proximity center. So this might be useful if you'd like to see other accounts in the area. So you can change the units here on the left. So when you set proximity center, it will add a boundary layer where you can select kilometers and select the distance. So I'm going to go 12 kilometers. And then you can see it will place um, a circle around with that distance. So I'm going to remove my boundary from the map by clicking the X icon and open up my pop up for the account and go into actions again. So you also have the option to remove the marker if you want to do that. You can also change the owner so you can click and change the owner from this page directly. So for example, all you need to do is click and type in click into the search bar, type the person's name you want to change the account over to. And then by default, it's going to transfer your open opportunities, open events and your contacts. And then you have these additional options to transfer over as well, along with the ownership. To transfer it over, all you need to do is click save and close, but I'm just going to click cancel for this example. You also have the chatter option if this is something you use um, widely within the team. You also have a related list. So here you will be able to see opportunities that have a close date in the current year. You will see the opportunity name, the opportunity type, the stage and the amount um, when products have been added to it. You'll also see contact information. So if you've contacts added against the account, you will see their name, um, their phone and their email as well and also their title. There is also a weather tab if you might find that useful. So to close the pop up window, all you need to do is select the X icon. If, for example, you click on a marker and you notice that a lot are showing up in the one location, it possibly can be because you only have the city entered for um, the account. So for example, if I had 10 accounts in in my territory and I only populate the city of the billing address as Galway, all those accounts will be layered on top of each other. So it may look like one individual dot, but when you click into it, it'll expand out and you'll see the different um, accounts. To um, ensure that they are sitting in the correct location or plotted on the correct location on the map, it is important to ensure that the billing information is um, completed on the account. You can also remove the layer that is currently on the map by pressing the um, X icon next to the layer name. 
if you wish to refresh um, the layer, you can also do this using the three dots um, under the options. You can select refresh and you can zoom the map to fit your data. If you do remove um, the layer from the map, you can just navigate into saved and go back to home. This is where you will see a personal folder where you were free to create uh, customizable layers and to find any uh, layers that are created um, by the team. These will be visible within the corporate folder, followed by the origin folder, and you will see um, a list of layers here. Um, and as we release new layers, these will become visible uh, to you within this folder. There also is a North America folder that is specific to our um, layers for our North America team members. To add a layer onto a map, all you need to do is uh, click the layer name itself and it will start to load onto the map again for you. And that concludes today's training on Salesforce maps. Um, thank you for watching and we hope you find this.